Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. So this is the first Art Club that I'm filming this year and I thought it might be fun to change it up a little bit. I know we did a Christmas with the ornaments, but that's not what I mean. You see painting things here. What I mean is I think that it might be fun to do stuff more mixed media with uh, uh, the idea of using what you have and instead of just trying to recreate something, just do it your own way. And this is just one example. This is the stuff I'm using. Make it your own. So today we're going to start off with one of my, okay, pot, I think my favorite painting in the, in the whole world. It's Wheatfield uh, with Crows by Van Gogh. Um, it was one of his last paintings before he died in 1890. And I just, I love the colors in it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. So um, we aren't going to try and stay close to it. If you want to, you can. Instead, I'm going to use a bunch of different mediums being these various things to create my version of it that's more loose than the, the stuff that we were doing last year. Um, this is use what you have time. <laughs> Okay, if you have crayons, use crayons. It's all cool. Use, use what you have. I'm essentially kind of using crayons. So I just wanted to show you an example. If you want to stay close to it, you totally can. I suggest um, a, uh, an opaque paint like acrylic or gouache or one of those. Um, his painting was in oil. If you have oil paint, go for it. Um, yeah, just <laughs> go for it if you have oil paint. Don't do it on paper, though. So here's an example that I did. This was a use what you have situation. I painted this um, a few years ago in a hotel room in Houston. Um, I went down there because there was a Van Gogh exhibition at the art at the uh, art museum, and it was the last weekend, and it was so terribly crowded. But it was so cool to see like all of the actual Van Gogh paintings, and there were there were so many, but there were so many people, and they had this beautiful exhibit, and it was amazing. And I got back and I felt inspired to paint my favorite painting, which I don't even think was there. So, uh, and what I had was a little set of gouache and that's what I used for that. So use what you have. It'll be awesome in the end. Anyway, um, here's what I have this time. Use, if you have acrylic paint, use acrylic paint, use whatever you want. Um, I'm going to start with watercolor. I have um, a blue, a yellow, and a brown essentially. This specifically is Prussian blue, this is uh, Indian yellow, and this is burnt sienna, but you can use any blue, yellow, or brown you want. Um, these are essentially crayons. Um, they, uh, I have a white one, a yellow one, and a brown one. Specifically, I think, yeah, that is just brown, yellow, and white. Um, and then I have a selection of colored pencils. These are just some that I think I might use. I have a green, a light yellow, a darker yellow, white, black, and a blue, and a paintbrush. Um, and I'm gonna use this to sketch. I like to sketch in colored pencil, but erasable colored pencil, um, more than I like to use regular pencil because this doesn't show up as much, but if you have regular pencil, go to if you want to be brave and use a non erasable colored pencil go to so this is do what you want to do and send it take a picture and send it into the library so we can see because we like to see what you do okay so let's get started there is a traceable in the description if you want to go that route and you can color it or do whatever you want i'm just going to start from scratch and color it okay so Here's how I'm going to do this. This is going to be a super duper simple drawing. So the, oh, this is um, watercolor paper. It is five inches tall, 10 inches wide. You don't need to use the size. You can use whatever. You can use a whole sheet and then like tape the edges if you want. You can just use a whole sheet and change the perspective of it. That's fine too. Um, this is, if you want to go by proportion, it's about twice as wide as it is tall. So that's what, that's what I was going for eyeballing it anyway. So the field, we're drawing the line, the horizon line, the field hits the sky a little bit above the top. I mean, a little above the middle, it kind of gently goes up and down and up. Okay. 
So then we have this road. You can yeah, you can see that. Uh, or this trail. It starts at a point and then it comes and it goes that way. And we'll leave that there for a second. And then this comes and then comes down here. And then there is a brown trail in the middle of it that goes like that. And it just kind of goes along the inside. I'm not a fan of that part. Okay. And then up here we have the same situation. This starts in a point. And it's just kind of a wavy line. It goes like that. And then another one. It's also wavy and it goes to the bottom. And then over here we have this green business. It goes down and up and down about like that. And then over here we have this about like that. Okay. And in the sky we have clouds. Draw these very lightly since it's going to be light underneath. Kind of roll like that. Just think kind of starry night. How all of that stuff kind of rolls. So this kind of goes like that. And then this one is higher. Let's uh, say it starts like that, and I'm just going the general way it's kind of going. Okay, and that's good. I'm not the the crows are in the traceable, but I'm not messing with those here. See that goes all the way down here, and I do believe that is it for our drawings. Okay, so if you're using a pencil, um, I suggest you go back and um, erase it some just so you can barely see it so it's not really sticking out. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to paint the sky first. I guess I need a palette, don't know. I have this deep. Okay, I have my little palette. I'm going to paint the sky and then I'm going to paint the, uh, the bottom, okay? So I'm going to get some blue. Well, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the top. I'm going to do the top uh, wet and wet like this. Which means all I'm doing is wetting the paper. Now, your mileage may vary with this, as mine might, because I'm not using really good paper. For doing wet and wet with watercolor, you are best using best to use 100% uh, cotton paper, which this is not. So we'll see. We'll see how this turns out. Part of this is just like let's just let's just play around and see what happens because it's a good time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some blue. I know this looks really dark here and it looks dark in general because it is cloudy and about to be rainy outside when I'm recording it. Okay, so there's some paint. Uh, see what it looks like. That is nice. I love this color. Okay, so the darkest part of the sky, the way I'm going to do this, is right here right? It's right here and at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm getting some paint and I'm going along there first. Okay? And again, this will work better with 100% watercolor paper, but I mean 100% cotton paper, but this is not what I have. So I'm going to do that and then it gets lighter toward the horizon so I'm going to add some water. You see that? Yeah. I'm just adding some water to my paint. Let's test it. That looks okay. I'm going to paint the rest of it a lighter color. Remember that watercolor dries lighter than uh, it looks when you put it on the paper. So 
don't go for all of that yet. Okay, for the inside of the cloud, I'm going to add a little bit more water to that. Okay, and then I'm going to paint the inside, and I am letting it just kind of go wherever. Now, if you have pools, go ahead and get rid of them. You can also, only while it's wet, if you want some areas to be darker, you can go in with more potent paint and add some, again, only, only, only while it is wet and really wet because once it starts drying, it's going to start, you're going to start picking up more paint than you're putting down and it's just not going to look good and you're going to be unhappy. So I'm just going to go, I'm putting in the areas where it's darker. Hmm. Like that. Okay. And now, I bet you can guess what we're going to have to do. Because we don't want uh, this running into that. So what we're going to do is dry it. Now, if you have a lot of water on your paper, don't use a blow dryer until your paint is dry enough that it's not going to move around. So give it a couple minutes. I need a paper towel. Um, give it a couple minutes before you dry it if it's moving a lot. Um, and then uh, go ahead. You can dry it with a blow dryer. You can just wait for it to dry. That's cool too. Okay, let's dry. My sky is dry. And now I'm going to paint the bottom. And I'm going to do that kind of the same way that I did the top. And let's see, i do this, I think my paintbrush is clean, it is, and I get yellow, again, use whatever yellow you have, it does not need to be this yellow, let's see, just don't forget to test it, that well, looks pretty good for a first, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to paint all of it, it, yeah, all of it except the parts that are brown. So everything but that and that and that. There's my yellow. And now I'm going to go back with some blue. I'm going to mix. Let's, let's see what this does. Mix that to that. And I'll go with that one, I think. All I did was put some of that yellow and that blue. That's okay. I'm going to go back and do over this yellow this greeny color still wet. I'm okay with that. I'm just going over. It bleeds a little bit. That's okay. I'm not going for precise. Just painting the parts that are green. Green while it's still wet. Okay, and now I am going to dry it again. We're almost done with the painting part. That's dry. And now I'm going to get my brown. I should be keeping track where, oh, there it is. Of where my paints are. I'm gonna get my brown. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just gonna get some out of here. So there's some brown. Let's see what it looks like. That's okay for me. Get the paint everywhere. I'm gonna clean that up real fast. So I have some brown. Actually, I think I'm going to get a little bit more. I don't want it like to be d super dark or anything. I just want, I want it to be there. Let's see. Let's try this again. That looks good for now. So I'm going to paint these three areas brown, and then we'll be done with painting. There's my brown, and now I'm going to dry it. At this point, 
Um, before you start adding anything else, be sure and draw and dry your painting very thoroughly because you can mess up with your paper. You can have all kind of crazy things go on like these almost crayons are completely water soluble and it kind of turn in, well, okay, totally turn into watercolor if they get, uh, if they get wet, but I don't want them to be watercolor today. And so I don't want it to get wet. So I'm going to dry my painting very thoroughly. Okay, my painting is dry, and now we're going to start adding this other stuff. Um, depending on what you're using, you might want to think about what order you want to do it. If you're using something like paint marker, uh, you can pretty much do that anytime. Um, you can add more paint, especially if you have something opaque, like um, acrylic or, or uh, gouache, you can add it on top of watercolor. Perfectly fine. It'll be great, but you can't watercolor on top of it. You can on top of gouache, but it probably won't show up too well. It'll just tint it. So um, for this kind of thing, I always go from least opaque, this in this case being watercolor, to most opaque, in this case being these crayons. So that leaves these. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to start, let's see, with these clouds, which if you look at them closely, they aren't really white. They're more like light yellow. So I've got this light yellow and I'm just going to go straight in and I'm going to start doing this. Okay. So I'm starting to make the clouds with this yellow and with colored pencils too, you need to be careful what order you do them in. I want the base to be yellow, but I want them to be lighter than that. So I have this white and one nice thing about colored pencils is you can layer them and it also I mean it depends on what kind of colored pencils you have to how well they'll do you see I'm just making circular motions like that Oop, just, I'll just bring that over there some more okay and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here Let's do circular motions. Like that. And then go back over with white. You see how it's making this light yellow? We'll go back and put some more stuff on it with the crayons. Now, when I use those, you can totally use regular crayons and it'll be perfectly fine. I'm doing pretty hard little loop-de-loops on that okay so there's our start with the clouds let me sharpen my pencil which one is long I'm going to sharpen my pencil and you see how there are kind of um, streaks up in this for for the, the, the motion that Van Gogh used with his brush. Um, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it with the side of my pencil. I'm going to tilt this up a little bit and go in with the side and add some things like this to various parts and it's just kind of showing the shape like where the air is flowing just think starry night that's the kind of the thing that I'm doing here it's gonna go over the contour of that and down here and this is just why all it's doing is gonna lighten it some but it's gonna keep the keep the color I'm gonna go over here and it kind of goes up here and you can see the tapes coming up but that's okay Okay, I'll put some over here. We're not going over the whole thing. We're just adding some interest. We don't want it to be plain. We're, we want it to be visually catching. So put as much of this or as little as you want. Okay. And I'm going to go to some of the areas with blue. I'm actually going to get myself a longer point on here. Where's the lid? Um, and then I am going to go over 
some of the darker areas in the sky just like that. Let's see. Make sure this is going to do right. Yeah. See how that does? Just That's all I'm doing. Okay, so this part is darker. Up around here. And... You don't need to cover the whole thing with the colored pencil. Just as much as you want. Okay. Looks good to me. And now that is pretty much going to be our sky. I guess we can go ahead and add this. Let me get this blue off of here. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do with this. Just you can use a crayon. I'm going to go and do the same thing. This is just going to add another layer. You see how it's just kind of lightening it more? But it's giving it, I don't know how well you can see it, it's giving it a different texture than the other was. Okay, you can come in with a yellow. Let's do a couple little bits just to show the shape of it and that there is yellow in it. Okay, and also if you have lines, you can lighten those up. Okay, let's do as much of that or as little of that as you want. And see, adding these other things in here just makes it makes it look more interesting so there's our sky i'm going to leave our sky there until we put the crows in which we'll do later and now here we have the wheat field so the main thing i'm going to do let's see i need to sharpen this The main thing I want to do is I want to have the back the background of it and then I want the the lighter color on top okay and that will involve white so I'm gonna go in let's see just kind of the darker areas and just do kind of a streaky situation and this is just kind of showing that there's wheat in there and this is the part I'm really not trying to emulate uh, Van Gogh. I'm using a brighter color too. If you really want to get that color, that is yellow ochre. That is not, what is this, sun, sunburst yellow? I just chose this because I wanted, I want it lighter. Or brighter, not necessarily lighter. So I'm going to go in like this and I'm just making background and adding texture to it to show like you doing it with lines and the lines get shorter and shorter the farther they are away just to try and show some distance let's go up here I hope you can see that uh, this is this is showing texture this is not just me coloring it I'm drawing lines I'll do this and this is just kind of making this wheat field Below. Smaller and smaller lines as I get close to the top. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to go back with my lighter yellow, which will hopefully. I'm gonna go see if I have a yellow that's lighter than this. I found cream, which I hope is lighter. Let's see what this does. Yeah, I can see a little bit. So here I am. Hope you can see it. I think you can. I'm just going over it, not as much. I'm putting in my own little marks, and then up here, all of this 
I'm going to go back over it with white. All of this is horizontal. It's vertical down here, but this stuff over here is horizontal. And I need to sharpen this one too. Okay. I'm going over here and this is just, this is all going to be layered. Okay. I'm starting out because we want texture. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Start out. I don't want my lines to be the same distance apart. I don't want them all to be the same height. And up here, and then they start going horizontal. I'm making some, probably here, I'm making some pretty heavy marks here. And I'm just going through and putting a bunch of horizontal lines. You want really bright stuff you can go back with a um, color I mean with a uh, paint marker or you can go with actual paint um, not watercolor it would need to be opaque at this point and um, then you would get it would show up more so I'm gonna go back and I have white I'm gonna lighten this up You'll probably see this I'm going over just like this. I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I'm not trying to match them up. I'm just, these are highlights to show what's there. And then I'm going to go back after that. And I'm going to do this pretty heavy handed and go into the sky with some of them horizontal marks. So that's my color pencil. Now I'm going to go back with this yellow and we are going to put in some more bright yellow. It's like that. It will kind of mark over the color pencil, but not totally. We're just adding texture. Okay, I'm also going to get out my darker yellow. Let's see. And this is yellow ochre. I'm going to come in on the base over here, and this is showing up a lot more. Ideally, we should do this before we do the light, but that is okay. Sometimes you get in the middle of something, and you're like, oh, I need more contrast, and you just go in. That's what this is about. Okay, so I'm just going, putting in, this is just, just use a dark yellow. You can even use an orange. That would look nice too. Going in and putting this at the base of everything. And I'll put some in the middle. And now I'm going to go See, do I want to do that? I think I'm going to go get a brown colored pencil and we're going to do the tops of these little wheat bits. Here's a brown colored pencil and so I'm going to go on here and just do these strips. Okay, that is looking much better. I'm even going to go back with my brown um, crayon and just do a few. And they'll be a little bit heavier. Not going to do many. But it's easier. I guess these are both waxed based, but it's easier to mark over a uh, colored pencil than it is one of these. Okay. So there's my field. I'm happy with it. Play with it until you're happy with it. Just use whatever you have. And now let's go and do these. So we have the base color here. And we have this here. 
So I'm going to do this green part first. And the way I'm going to do it, I have this color green. This is lime peel, which I chose pretty arbitrarily. I'm going to go in like this. Okay, I'm going to give it direction like Van Gogh's painting. Like this, I'm just doing it in lines. I'm going to go all the way down this way and I'll put, I'll go ahead and put a little bit in here over that watercolor while I'm thinking about it. And I'm going to do it over here too. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go over this a little bit. Okay, and that is that for the screen and now there's some blue in it which is why I have the blue pencil I go in I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue in here it's still mostly green but there's blue and then there's more blue down here Just doing the same thing over here. I'm just going to emphasize the blue where there's more of it. Like a little more here. Like almost done there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. There's way more blue over here. I'm going to go in like this. I'm almost lightly coloring it. I'm putting way less pressure on it than I was when I was doing the screen. It's kind of going around it. So I'm just going to kind of do this to this side. I'm going to do something similar to the other side. Let's see. Okay. And this side against the way the road is, it's darker. And so I'm going to go over here. Do it like that. And there I'm going to go ahead and put a couple, a couple little places that is just like super dark over here. And it's pretty dark up here, right? And the other places, I'm just kind of lightly coloring it in, keeping it a little bit directional. Where that is, it comes down here. There we go. Now I'm going to go back with my light yellow and make some marks in that too. These are pretty hard because this yellow isn't showing up that much. Okay, what? Let's see, I'll put this cream on there to sharpen it again. Some of this in there. It's kind of blending in that blue and turning it into a green too. At the top. Let's see, this goes around here too, huh? And do more yellow and just cream. And go right over the top. Okay, can also do things like this with the crayons and you can use white. Let's go in and do wherever you want to do it. There's some dark in here. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit. I'm just using the blue here. And there's some up here, making light blue marks. Okay. You can do this with black too if you want. Okay. And now we're going to do the road. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do this with the crayon. I'm just going to go down like this over the brown part, do these little lines to show the strokes and the direction it's going. I'm going to do that on all three of these.
Okay, I'm also going to do yellow and white. That's over it. You can also be doing this with colored pencil. It'll work just fine. Let's put in some yellow. Let's see. What comes up here? Okay, there's also some green in there. Do I have a green? I do. I have a green crayon. Come up here. Let's put I'm a little bit of this green in there. Okay. I'm going to go back with some white. And little highlights. We're just adding more texture and adding more texture. Just makes it more interesting. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and get a more of a point on this. I go back over the roads with this brown colored pencil. I get a decent point on it. There we go. I'm going to go on the side like this. And this is going to blend all in with the other stuff. It's not going to much go over it, but it's just going to add to it a little bit. You see how it's mixing colors? It's not just making own color. Emphasizing that. Okay. I'm going to say that's it for the, um, actually I'm going to go back. White, I want to see this a little bit more. So I'm going to go with white over here and then go back with some more green over that. And so we can see this little green better. And that's going to be it except for the crows. So I'm not quite sure how the crows are going to work. Let's see what happens when we just use a colored pencil. This is all a big experiment. It'll probably be fine. If not, we will use a crayon. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm not going to do any kind of real detail on these birds. I'm just going to do, it's like a, it's like a stretched out M. M. that's good. Just like that. Have them going in different directions that let's see there's one over here and I'm kind of just putting them where they are in the painting I'm not being that picky about it I'm not trying to get exactly the same just be sure have them flying uh, in different directions and have little have little V's up here for birds that are really far away just put as many or as few as you want. I'm just making pretty hard marks with my black colored pencil. Um, you can also go back if that's not make if they're not making great marks, you can go back with a crayon. Let's see what this does. This will darken it for me. You want a bigger one? You can go back with a crayon and just make a bigger, wider mark. See, I'll do that to this one too, and that one. You can put as many of these guys as you want, where as few. That'll help darken them. <sighs> okay. Let's see. I think I'm done. I like it. You can add more detail. Is as much as you want um, keep going if you want to I think this looks awesome now don't forget to sign your painting let's see can I get by with the brown over here let's see if this will show up if not I'll get back here it is it's showing up don't forget to sign your painting it's awesome because you made it and now for the moment of truth I'm gonna peel up my tape and we shall see what the end result is. I like it. That looks neat. 
see I just used a pile of different art medium that's why it's called mixed media is just when you use more than one art media more than one type of paint or crayon or color or something like that you can use as many as you want um, there are a few rules about it just like you can't put pretty much anything else on top of oil paint if you use it um, and or else it just it won't work um, but uh, there aren't that many rules as you saw here I was using crayons and colored pencils and watercolor together and I like the result I hope you do too and I hope you join me and if you did please take a picture and send it into the library social media because we love to see what you do and yeah I will see you next week for more art club bye